Before I even begin this video, I'll talk about exactly why I like pickup videos, even though I consider it content slop we little pigs consume on a Sunday morning. So let's get into why I like pickup videos. Besides living vicariously through these individuals you watch, sometimes the pieces shown are an exposure to something new you may have never experienced. And what do I mean by experience? I'm getting at the idea that I'm sure you're watching these videos and you might not be in the same style genre as a creator you're watching. You might just be sitting there watching with sweatpants and a t-shirt on, and that's a fit you'd casually wear on a Tuesday afternoon. Being able to expose yourself to different pieces and being shown items that you may have never thought about looking into can actually help activate your brain into thinking of new possibilities for your wardrobe. Now, will this increase your overall reasoning for wanting to consider purchasing the items that are showcased? Maybe. Possibly. I mean, if you've been money maxing, you probably could. I'll touch on the idea later, so keep that in mind for the future. Now, overall, pick-up videos are super straight to the point and are very easy to digest. When you see the thumbnail and title, you already know what you're signing up for. It's a pickups video with some possibilities of a vlog, but not only that, we get to see the person's personality, which can also be another reason why we even watch. Now, the real question is, why is this the format for fashion content usually? Pick-up videos work well. It's a format that many fashion YouTubers and influencers follow. Do you notice how I differentiate the two? Yes, I have a bit more respect for YouTubers and influencers, I've lived in both worlds. Being a short form content creator is largely focused on jingling keys with edits to keep attention of the iPad baby's brains while YouTube tends to not rot your brain with the insane amount of stimulation. TikTok is a cocaine of social media, or even better, ADHD. Anyway, we as fashion creators don't really know what our supporters will consume in, and we tend to look at what works. Every fashion YouTuber has done at least one pickups video at some point in their lifetime. It's easy to produce, it's a part of the job, and it can be a tax write-off since it's for a business. Oh, did you forget that these people actually do content creation as a job? Let's not forget that. Now it's kind of ironic that I'm even making this video, but why exactly did I even do pickup videos in my past? And what's making me reform? I specifically caved into doing pickup videos since it was what people wanted. And I figured, hey, it's easy. And what are the repercussions of my involvement with opening a haul of clothes for my small closet that needed an upgrade? Now, just like post nut clarity, it got me thinking. Thinking is bad, we gotta stop thinking. Now we've gotten this far. So what exactly is the problem with pickup videos or haul videos? This content feeds into a vicarious feeling of consumption culture. We sit and watch people casually opening up boxes of clothing pieces we the viewers couldn't casually purchase. Now I'm gonna give you an analogy. When we watch this content, we end up scratching an itch in a sense. Yet that itch was a rash and now you really have an urge to scratch more. What exactly does this all mean? Well, of course, you can't go out and purchase a haul of chrome hearts, but you can dash for alternatives, specifically things you can afford in your tax bracket, whether that might be Zara, H&M, Uniqlo, or maybe even going thrifting. Looking at people's hauls of clothes hits the mind in a way where you feel the need or want to also participate in feeling that rush of excitement of getting something new. When I was younger, I'd used to watch these hype beast hauls and I'd ask myself, man, it would be so cool if I had the money to be able to open up these boxes full of random things. I opted for going thrifting to fill that void. And now that void was now gaping after watching these videos, which was filled with compulsive buying. Consumer psychologist Nightingale explains that our social circles are increasingly global and overwhelmingly digital. We recognize elements of ourselves and creators and therefore select through followers, likes, and comments a database of internet personalities we're willing to trust. As people choose to follow influencers similar to their actual or ideal selves, there's a default basic level of trust. But like in any relationship, they have to continue to deliver a value to keep the power of influence. They need to keep showing the goods, despite the should I, shouldn't I keep this item dynamic of many of these videos. Their existence is definitely driving consumption and clothing. Now this relates to a renowned theory, Maslow's, Mas Maslow's? I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sure someone will correct me. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Basically, this means having a sense of belonging fulfills a deep-rooted psychological need. Many social media NPCs look to fulfill this need by being a part of the online fashion community. Now, many of us replicate purchasing behaviors and copying styles to feel a part of that fashion community. Like I said earlier, fashion influencers are also guilty of doing hauls off the basis that everyone else is doing it, so why shouldn't I? And this is the format I should follow. Now, it takes one to know one because I have fallen for content formation or formatting, or content copying. I don't really know what to say there, but you know what I mean. It's basically where you look at what others are doing and you see what works. Now, without really considering what I was doing, I figured why not try it out? Soon after making these videos, I realized that this is a problem that I also don't want to push onto my audience that watches me. I do preach about not overconsuming in first-hand items. Now in context, all my pickups are all secondhand, but I still contribute to the problem regardless if I put a disclaimer justifying why I'm doing this pickups video that I consider content slop. Now, we do this as a job. 
Like many of us, we invest into our careers, which for me would be clothing, as these are considered tools and examples for future videos, and it's also a hobby of mine that I enjoy, so I have the justification on purchasing clothing. And I think a lot of the times, a lot of people end up forgetting that the people that they're watching with this screen here that I'm currently recording with my camera is that I'm doing this as a job. And with this job, I'm allowed to really invest in what I'm doing. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do what I'm doing currently, or then I can go out and invest on my wardrobe. You know, this is my current wardrobe. This is all my clothes that I own and all my boots. It's pretty small compared to many other creators on this platform. But regardless, I think a lot of the times people end up forgetting that we're actually getting paid for this videos that we're doing, the sponsorships we get. And it's kind of, it, there's no boundary. Yet with the parasocial effect, we forget that very specific thing. We see these people as friends at times. If you go into these videos acknowledging that this is a career for them and their pickups are a part of that, then you can now differentiate that this clothing haul isn't realistic for the average Joe. And this really sets the perspective to possibly not fall into gaining that itch for wanting to consume. Now that you have set that boundary from creator's jobs to average Joe, you might still feel the void regardless due to not being fulfilled with your closet. We're all sentient beings and the choice is ultimately yours to participate in the culture of clothing consumption. Always keep in mind that whatever media you're consuming is linked to a career and unfortunately fashion content can be harmful due to the fact that there's an action one can do to further their conquest to filling that void. Whether that may be in following the next trend or needing to buy a haul of clothes to keep up with the ever-changing fashion wasteland. Now the one question that I tend to ask myself is do we as creators need to take responsibility of what our audience does? The thing is the choice and decision of buying or purchasing items is ultimately done by you. It's not done by the creator. Sure, there might be some sort of influence in regards to doing a fashion haul or these are items you need to buy, things like that, like we're a very key word, sort of speak, but you ultimately do decide to buy what you want with your money. It's not like I'm holding a, a weapon to your head forcing you to go and buy a Zara haul or buying a bunch of Yoji or whatever you're seeing me wear. Just because I'm wearing something doesn't mean that you necessarily need to be buying that thing. I'm playing devil's advocate here now. The content that we do make does influence the people that are watching. Whether I want to believe that the people that watch my content tend to be smarter than the average Joe, I would assume that most of you guys watching my content consume me on a different rate than others. I know we're on a whole different playing field in terms of our, our brain power. We're not Neanderthals where we get consumed by the content that's being pushed out and just influenced by whatever's going on. I'd like to assume that, but that's not something that is necessarily true. I mean, I'm sure there's someone that's watching me that might get influenced by even even my own opinions about fashion, my own thoughts about fashion. Because if I made a video talking about like shoes you need to buy, boots you need to purchase, like these things and objects you need to buy, I really do think that people would feel inclined to trust my opinion and then go and buy it. Go buy the, the Yoji boots that I acquired. Go buy the Guidi boots that I do have myself. Content's a dangerous thing and it could definitely parlay into uh, over consuming and in objects that we don't necessarily need. I mean, my closet right now is, it's good enough. I, I don't need any more stuff, but watching haul videos of people get like cooler pieces than I have if I'm comparing my wardrobe to theirs, it's like, dang, I, I need I need to go out and up my game. I need to, to go buy stuff. I get the, the opportunity to really just go balls deep in buying clothes and kind of just justifying it with it's sort of a business. Um, it's a investment. I mean, I would assume most people like to invest in their careers, whether you're in computer science or in nursing and health, like things like that. We buy stuff for our jobs. Maybe it might be a luxury to buy certain objects and pieces that might make life easier. But with YouTube and with just being a content creator, a influencer, I personally, and being called an influencer to me is kind of like it's being called a slur at that point. I feel like YouTube's a little bit higher up on that scale in terms of uh, making content. But I mean, you see like some of these fashion YouTubers, these fashion content creators with massive closets. And it's like, can you really blame them? I mean, they're really investing their money into these clothing pieces, but it's like, do they really need all these clothes realistically? Like for the average person to compare themselves to someone like me, I think is very unfair to that person because I'm doing it as a job while they're not. And I have the money and the means to go out and purchase these things. I have the time to do it. I have a reason to do it. 
uh, the average person isn't going to buy a bunch of Yoji. They don't need to buy a bunch of clothes because they don't really need it. And at the end of the day, we do forget that fashion kind of has a boundary, like, and it's a hobby and a way of life. And I think, unfortunately, sometimes people forget that it is a hobby and it just becomes a way of life. And then they feel the need to then purchase a bunch of things in necessity. But in reality, it's just wants. It's not a need. Fashion, buying clothes in excess is not a need. I mean, the same MFs that are dyeing their hair different colors, you know they're going through a mental crisis. It's the same thing with people that are buying a bunch of hauls. Like, Sheen hauls? Come on. You're not mentally stable. There's something going on in that brain. There's a reason you went out to purchase all those clothes. It's because your boyfriend broke up with you. Your your ex came back and cried and wants you back. I don't know. Your Someone died in your family. Your pet died. I don't know. There's an extension to the reasoning of why we end up buying clothes. Like there has to be a purpose. And usually there's a cause. And then the effect is to fill that void with problem focused coping. I've talked about this in another video. Uh, feel free to go watch that. <laughs> really good plug there, but it's super simple. I hope you understood the video. I hope my points were clear and concise and congratulations. I actually for once put a conclusion to this video, a, a ending. But nonetheless, let's go into the city to check out this new grand opening of designers. I actually even saw on the list that they had Black Merrill and Jordan Arthur Smith, which are two designers that I really do like, especially Black Merrill. So I have to go check this out and I'm really excited to see like maybe what might be there. But anyway, let's head into the city. So welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Although we already went out and bought coffee this morning, I wanted to show off my impeccable coffee machine setup. My espresso machine that is so beautiful. Why are we here though? To eat meat. <laughs> what? what? To cook. Bring out the meat. Bring out the meat. Bring okay. out the meat. What do we got here today? We got sterling steak. Steak. Black truffle sausage. And what is this? Bacon. We're gonna do steaks and eggs with sausage. What? Is this chicken sausage? I don't know, it just sounded good. Black truffle sausage? Pork. God, that's wrong. <laughs> so you wanna cook, I'm cooking with full yoji on. Bring out eggs. Two steaks and that's our meal. Yum. <laughs> What are you wearing today? This is the JQ event. picked out outfit because my first one got rejected. Um, I've got trip and boots on, a Sakai pleated leggings, a Yoji like half pants kind of situation, and then just like a vintage distressed cotton shirt with leather bag that's sad and falling apart and has mysterious stains on it. Like, what is that from? I have no clue. Very cool. Full Yoji. <laughs> That's it. Just full Yoji. Nice weird pocket here. Patient Zero bag. Uh, Yoji ring. Friend, friend made this. Yoji. Yoji pants that look like diapers. Look at these. <laughs> Diaper trousers. They could form into like a dress, but they're like big wide pants. My Yoji chain wallet. And then Wheaties. Uncommon model, you know, super rare, super exclusive. No big deal, let's go. I guess we just walked in. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Whoa, it's you. <laughs> uh, are we about to go get in line for this event? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. 
What was your thoughts about the event, Tom? A lot of people wearing black. A lot of people wearing black. A lot of cool people. But I still look awesome, and I'm still the most unique person that was there. <laughs> Insecurity <Yeah>. reigns true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, to end it all now, uh, thank you everyone for watching this video from the vlog to now and listen to me ramble. Uh, new videos every so often. I'm going to be trying my best to put them out as much as possible, and I hope they just continue to get better over time. I'd like to thank everyone from the Patreon that's helped support me from then to now to next month to whenever you decide to leave that i appreciate it so much i'm doing podcasts there every week uh i don't know i just kind of talk about random stuff you know there's some some things there you can listen to me actually ramble about a bunch of different things topics and conversations and opinions about stuff uh i do plan on doing some more things over there i'd like to kind of just really up the ante. I clearly moved from my uh, my old room. I'm in a new room because the other room had black mold. Yeah, I mean, they're not really doing anything about it, so I just decided to move rooms. Uh, this room does not have black mold. It smells interesting. It smells normal. Oh, I also got a bed frame. Uh, I'll show it at some other point, but I, I did get a bed frame. That's how you know I'm doing well. I'm doing a lot better now. I'm not sleeping on the ground no more, unfortunately. You know, I, I had to improve. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me. I appreciate you. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cue the music. Remember to watch one of these videos at some point. Um, new me, new life. Ride wife. It's almost endearing to see the emotion flood their eyes when they get that rush of dopamine when they open up their boxes.